I want to be the ugliest person. That's why I have Because then everything that I look upon is always going to be beautiful. It's really attainable to dream for you as well. <laughs> <laughs>
There are there are legitimate appellated uh, uh, sweet rosés that are there for cultural reasons. They just they're actually really hard to find. If you ask me to go buy you one right now, I would struggle to find them. They're very hard to find. They're very niche. It's really interesting. Yeah, because I throughout my entire uh, wine drinking experience, it's definitely been the sort of thing where I've assumed they are going to be sweeter, and then every time I've tried one, inevitably it's not been very sweet, and I've gone, mm. "Oh, this isn't a good rosé." Not not a good, but it's not what I was looking for. So what it actually is, is it's a branding issue for me to, for, to an extent. Or branding of a category, yes. Branding of yeah, a category. Yeah, yeah. The, and yeah. it's not an issue that rosé producers have. It's a issue that idiots who consume rosés have. Yeah, I think I think to be honest, the the idiots that consume rosés, as you say, are actually the smart ones because um, they they you've seen the rise and rise and rise of this sort of salmon pink, you know, style of rosé. From a perspective of a winemaker, it's really hard to be able to produce a sweet version of a salmon pink rosé. Yeah. So people have naturally gravitated going, if it is salmon pink, it is therefore dry. And so we've seen more dry rosés, therefore we've seen more salmon pink rosés being being produced. Mm. Um, and largely through the same production method. So people have moved and progressed away from uh, the sort of the two methods, methods that allow you to just produce very quickly and very easily, which is sanye or salasso, which is where you basically crush and red grapes, leave it on skins for a little while and bleed off some. And the, actually the goal is technically not to make rosé, it's a byproduct. You're trying to concentrate red yep. wine. You make um, yeah, yeah, like more popularized than something like Pinot. Yeah. Whereas like you make a really more structured and dense Pinot, and then you have a Pinot Noir Rosé. Yeah, on the side of it, uh, adding adding red wine to white wine, probably most famous in Champagne, where how that's mm -hmm. how Champagne Rosé is made. Um, you can see that in many other countries culturally as well, um, but more so just literally picking picking grapes at the ideal level of ripeness for the like intentional production of rosé has become the predominant name of the game and this is what we see in Provence what we see in Australia New Zealand America everywhere sure um with rosé is there a particular I, I don't like again we're generalizing here but red wine having with uh generally speaking something that's a bit richer mm -hmm. white wine quite goes quite well with seafood or things of that nature, depending on the white wine, obviously. not That's not a catch-all for everything, but generalizing. Is there something that rosé typically, like is there a time that you should pair rosé with food specifically or? I, I, I don't pair rosé with food, I pair rosé with experience. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think that's Sun, situational like it, Yeah, it's like, it's an aperitif. Like I'd pair it more like you would an Aperol spritz. You don't pair an Aperol spritz with food, you pair an Aperol spritz with, let's have a good time, let's have a have a drink, yep. it's warm weather, let's have a good time. So for that reason, would you say that uh, rosé can almost be seen more of a, uh, is it one of the more social wines? That's like, it's something that's yeah. meant to be drunk with other people. It's more of a- uh, The idea of ro drinking rosé. Conviviality. Yeah. The yeah. idea yeah. is bringing people together, having a bit of fun, not take it too seriously. The, uh, the yeah. idea of dro drinking rosé by yourself, just a little bit sad. It is. Yeah, like it, it well, is. You've got some like real degustation methods to like white and red wine where you can pair it with things and have these mm. really interesting mm. pairings. Whereas rosé is a bit more of like, let's let our hair down. It's a nice day honest, outside. I've, I've rarely had a sort of, in, in the moments I've been lucky enough to run through sort of full degustation menus at restaurants, I have rarely had rosé thrown out of me. And I would actually never many songs to actually find those pairings because I think that you could find a lot of thrilling pairings with rosé and food. It um, hates, yeah. In particular, desserts is probably really interesting, not because mm. of the sweetness. I want to emphasise that. And I think that's the thing. People are expecting... It's the relief of sweetness. But it's a contrast yeah. thing then. It's a contrast yeah. thing. It's also a flavour um, uh, comparison. Like You'll be able to see some degree of flavour comparison between what you're seeing in rosé and what we're seeing in, in the dessert itself, whether it's fruit-driven or not. Um, but it depends on the type of rosé, how it's presented. Like I said, rosé has a pretty wide gamut of, of weight, body, texture... You know, even as you said, you know, sweetness and sugar uh, as well. Sure. Uh, another question that we've asked about all the other wines that we've spoken about in these 101s is what should I be spending my money on? Like, should I be, is there specific regions that I should be going for? Is there a certain price point that like I should really aim to spend mm -hmm. above or below? Like, yeah. what are the, what, what are your buying rose guides? Uh, it's a good thing. It's like you can get rose pretty much everywhere. Yeah. Um, the good uh, Provence is one of the largest producers of 
rosé and probably just wine in general in the world um, and it's widely distributed so you can get like a good Provence dry style of rosé at around 20 bucks in any place in the world yeah uh, which is great um, then there's also locality to it um, so like South Australia we've got plenty of great rosé producers if you want like an icon and if you want the sweeter style you can go to Rockford Alicante Boucher which is yep. kind of one of the more iconic white uh, rosés in the country otherwise you can still say dry there's there's a, a, a spin effects. Spin effects is fantastic. Effects is is fantastic. Hard, one of one of um, my one of my favorites is a little bit more money. Um, the Far Sanye Rose, Sanye yeah. Pinot Noir Rose, one of the best in the country, which is delicious. Small but producer shout out Sven Joshki, uh, <laughs> Dolcetto Rose is fantastic. So there's some really good local ones. You can you can spend an arm and a leg though. Like you can go upwards of a couple hundred bucks, and you're starting to go into like Whispering Angels top tier stuff by Ott. Um, mm. uh, top tier stuff. Uh, there's um, you can always get rose champagne, which is yeah, really yeah. expensive. Ro- rose champagne is is remarkably uh, pricier than its its you know white cousins. Um, really? So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, for for questionable reasons uh, as well, probably more market driven than than anything else. Um, so you can uh, pay what you get for that. And we recently did a tasting actually, uh, and it's just for at work. Um, we did a internal tasting of all the top tier rosés you can get out of Provence. Provence, um, Not uh, a hell of a lot of crazy difference. I think this is more, uh, again, a little bit of a champagne story where we're seeing um, the market take over the price point of the wines rather than, you know, legitimacy of sight expression. Um, so for this reason, as Noel was just saying, I reckon staying at, at the lower price brackets is probably going to offer you the value that you're searching for unless it is brand prestige that you're searching for. Reasonable, right? Yeah, uh, don't go too far north of fifty dollars. Is as yeah. a as a yeah, hot tip. Good standard rule. Yeah. Um, yeah. Otherwise, there's. I'm looking at one right now. Closer burn to Boren is probably one of the more interesting yeah. funky rosés out there. It's about fifty five bucks Australian. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sweet, big fan. Well, uh, in conclusion, we've debunked my theory that pink wine is sweet, which is good. I won't. I'll know not to expect that next. Most time. of the time. Yeah. Most of the time. On a. 25th birthday through McLaren Vale in the local wine regions or something along those lines. Uh, had some fun, talked about a few rosés. This is another week of Wine 01. We're probably going to talk about maybe some Fortifieds coming up next. I, I don't know. Fortifieds. Fortifieds would be cool. I do. Underrated. Really enjoy, I really enjoyed a nice Fortified. Oh, goodness Oof. me, I do. Uh, but anyway, another week over. It's uh, the boss man, the guy with the long hair and the guy with the slightly longer hair signing off. <laughs> I might have to measure that, actually. So my head's <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Bye.